Um, you know, is marriage still a, a, a viable concept? You know, we talked about this well, with Allison the di- got that. Yeah, we, we talked about this with the divorce attorney. Um, you know, and obviously we have these relationships. It seems like nobody, what well, he's kind of saying, nobody wants to be in relationships anymore. Yeah. Nobody seems to value um, relationship marriages, relationships anymore. Motherfuckers want to be baby daddies, baby mamas. I, I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but I do. For me, I do know the nuclear family, at least to me, is the solution. We have to get back to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you think marriage is still a viable concept in today's modern era? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And and the fact that you said that, you know, you, it seems like no one wants to be in relationships anymore. I don't know if you guys are on the same timeline as me. That's all we talk about. Mm-hmm. Back in COVID 2020, it was entrepreneurship. Like that was the thing. How are we going to make more money because people were so yeah. afraid about losing their jobs? Now, mm-hmm. All we talk about is relationships. Yeah. We all want to be in them. We all want to be able to function and, and be healthy and fulfilled by them. We absolutely want those things. We are afraid. Mm-hmm. We are afraid. And so I'm so thankful that we have platforms like this that are having honest conversations with people who are reasonable and fair. Because what's happening is that there's a message that's being perpetuated throughout society, especially black America, that marriage is useless. Um, men are the, are the ones left holding the bag. There's no value in it anymore. And that's absolutely just not the case. It's just not the case. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Wrap Up Crew. No Booker, but I go by the name of Eli. As always, we got Ace with us. Yes, indeed. It's the wrap up. You know, it's hot because we fire. And on this note, shout out to Maya. He was talking about, you know. He used to go to <laughs> shout out to Maya. She used to pull up on the show. I mean, she could, she like, could still like, get it. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she is great. She's Asian, graceful. Graceful. Mm-hmm. Black. That black don't crack unless you smoke it. Then yeah, Maya. Different. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, so, mm-hmm. Anyway, man, we got some special guests in the building. Um, let them know where they can follow you at. Yes, absolutely. My name is Allison, certified dating and relationship coach. And you can find me at Align with Allison. Oh, Eli needs some help. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Patricia. You can find me at Patricia R J L four on Instagram. Mm. And I'm Cassandra. I'm a life and relationship coach and a men's advocate. And you can find me on Instagram at Ask Miss Cassandra. Hey guys, I'm Nicole Glass, and you can find me at Affirmations for Black Men. Mm-hmm. Mm. Listen, before we get into these topics, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you have not already subscribed. Hit that notification bell, man, because I really don't be on y'all enough about the notification bell. Y'all need to mm-hmm. stay up to date with everything that we got dropping. Join the second YouTube channel because we got two YouTube channels right now. Daily Rapper Crew clips. Um, that's going to be all short form content, the shorts, all of that good stuff, man. We're trying to separate the channels. That way it's not too crowded, overcrowded for y'all. Um, what else are we missing? Join the membership, join the Patreon. And oh, I was going to point at you. We ain't got no merch on. What's up? I mean, it's under the hoodie. It's like, oh, it's under the hoodie. <laughs> Get the it's merch, man. Daily Rapper Crew without cold. Like, you know what I mean? And listen to the podcast audio. You know, there's a lot of plugs. Mm-hmm. We got to get them out there. Like, podcast audio every Tuesday. We need y'all to listen to the audio because that's very important to these advertisers. They want to know y'all listening to the audio. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. make sure y'all tune in every Tuesday we drop that. Let me get to this first topic, right? Um, and since we got Nicole on the show, um, and I want to explain this because I did see your um, your TikTok. Your, the algorithm got to me somehow, and I know you do affirmations um, specifically for black men. And um, I want to say I appreciate you doing that because when I seen it, it did make me feel some type of way because that was like the first time we talk about on the show, black men are not used to hearing those type of affirmations. We usually get the, you know, y'all ain't shit, y'all monsters, y'all cheat, y'all abuse. Like we just hear the worst of the worst about black men. And you know, you have a TikTok dedicated to Instagram, this whole platform dedicated to affirmations. How important is affirmations, not just for black men, but just to speak life into each other as black men and black women? Yeah, I think it's extremely important because it allows us to reprogram our minds and our beliefs about ourselves and each other. If we're hearing so much programming, so much music, we don't control the music industry, right? So the money and the dollars is going towards the music that makes us feel a certain type of way about ourselves and going towards a certain narrative. So if we're telling ourselves a different narrative, a different story, we're able to believe differently about ourselves. And it's like an act of self-love. How you talk about yourself is really important because it's how you feel about others around you. Uh huh. And what do you, where did you get the inspiration, number one, to do that? Because, you know, we do live in such a society sometimes where it is 
it's good to go against the grain. You know what I mean? Everybody's attacking somebody, so it's good to go against that. What made you be like, you know what? I want to be an advocate. I know you as well as, as an Afri advocate for black men. What kind of made y'all want to go that route? Um, I'll start. I think what made me go that route was the affirmations I was giving myself. My therapist recommended it. I've been in therapy for three years. Mm -hmm. And she said it's a really good way to build a relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. And then so the more I started loving myself, the more I realized I wasn't showing up in love for the people around me. And then it just made me really sad because I didn't know how to care for myself. I didn't. I think black women, sometimes we have a particular tone when we're talking to black men. Um, and then so I know how to trigger black men with the way that I talk. So sometimes I don't feel heard because I'm saying it in a certain way. So I learned how to talk to myself so I could talk to the men that I love. Mm -hmm. that's, dope, that's beautiful for myself. Um, it's kind of two part. So it's a spiritual part of it. And then there's like a natural part. Spiritually, I just felt called, I felt led. Like I felt like God was like guiding me was guiding me towards like working with men and seeing men's issues and seeing it from a certain light. So it literally grieved my soul. Like I could feel it. You know how like you'll see different things, um, different topics on internet or the news, but there'll be like a specific topic that really bothers you. Uh -huh. And men's issues really bother me. And I have my degree in social work. So I have a master's degree in social work. And I started to reflect and I realized like, Dag, in the school of social work and in the mental profession, we have women's issues, women's studies, we have things that are focused on children and we have aging, right? And a, a couple of other groups, but there aren't any men's studies. And I understand why, right? I understand the impetus of why it has not existed up until maybe in the near future because we live in a man's society and it seems like it's already been catered to men. So they're looking at those who are vulnerable and the marginalized, but now men are marginalized and now men are vulnerable. And so coupled with my spiritual experience of God putting something in my heart plus my my natural advocacy put them together and it was just this is what i gotta do i know this is my purpose mm -hmm. love i think um you know sometimes even when you said that sometimes i think we loop black men into this you know we always speak about this patriarchy right you know the, the white man has oppressed the woman or whatever the case is and we kind of loop black men into that like you know we participated in that and a lot of black men are like wait no, we never oppressed our women you know what i mean so why are we being lumped in with a group of men who have and um you know to that point, you know, even when we talk about feminists or even black feminists, they look at black men through a lens of, you know, white patriarchy. And then mm -hmm. they just assume that, you know, we have committed those atrocities. And I'm not saying black men are perfect, but we do fall into that category sometimes, mm -hmm. which kind of makes it hard to have these conversations with black women because they, you know, they want to feel like they have been oppressed or black men are just the worst or whatever the case is. So you can see it being reflected into relationships. And I know you said you was also a relationship coach as yes. well. Mm -hmm. So what made you want to get into that, I guess, that space? Because it's easy to pander to one demographic or the other, and it might be more success that way. But what made you be like, you know what? I want to focus on getting um, relationships back together. That's an excellent question. So I actually come from 15 years of um, an education background. My bachelor's degree is in education. I was a social studies teacher. And what I noticed is that the students who were struggling the most were the ones that were coming from single households mm. where they were either living with only their mom most times, sometimes a single dad. And what I noticed is that the the kids who were coming in with parents who were not only together and living with each other, but seemingly happy, right? A little extra pep in their step during open school night. Those were the students who were doing the best. Mm. And so this was kind of like backwards planning. If I wanna have a positive impact on my community. If I want to have a positive impact on the way that we function as a society, we kind of washed. Like you in your 30s, you in your 40s, like we're kind of done. The work that needs to be done now is changing yeah. the way that I, no offense, um, <laughs> it's, changing, it's changing the way that our children are brought up. So yeah. how do we do that? If I can impart on the youth, right? Mm -hmm. 20s, 30s, 40s who are starting their romantic lives and kind of change the way that they function romantically, then that means I'm going to be changing the children that come from those relationships. Okay. Changing the children that come from those relationships will then have the biggest impact on society. Got you. Um, this next topic is, you know, since you guys are dating coaches or you guys have some experience or just everybody in general, you know, what are some of the flaws? We're going to get to both the men and women. What are some of the flaws that you see that women have, um, single women have when it comes to the dating market? Oh, Number one, number one is not going outside. Mm. And that mm. sounds like simple, like duh, no. Like actually not putting themselves in a position to be met and to be seen. 
your husband is not going to be delivered to you like an Amazon package. And I bet you on Christmas Day, he's not going to be underneath your Christmas tree. You have to make an effort to go outside. Mm -hmm. I would couple that with part B, which is dating apps. So maybe you're not in a city that's the most social. Maybe for whatever reason, going outside is not reasonable or practical for your lifestyle. Then we need to make this virtual. Go on dating apps. You have to put yourself out there for you to be found by the partner that you deserve. Data apps kind of got, they seem to have this stigma, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, that is just purely sexual. Nobody really seems to be serious. So I, do you think more people are getting away from the, the dating apps? I think that since, well, I know that since COVID, the amount of dating profiles has increased by 600%. Oh, wow. mm. So it's not that people are getting away. I think that people are getting frustrated. They take breaks. They go back on. Um, I know that there's a lot of negative conversation. I think quietly people are then reactivating those profiles and they're still swiping, though. Gotcha. So, yes, there is definitely a negative connotation attached to dating apps. So people are on it and people are meeting and they're getting engaged and they're getting married yeah, and they're starting yeah. families. And folks are too quiet about that. And that's yeah. why sometimes you see those reels that go viral that says, I met my husband on Bumble. Because we're so accustomed to hearing the negative, we need to start talking about the positive. Got you, got you. I'm not going to lie. I was one of those people that did not believe in dating apps. I felt like those dating apps were like for creeps and people that didn't have no social cues at all. Mm -hmm. So I was not interested in going on dating apps at all. I like meeting people organically. I like pulling the energy. But recently, <laughs> I put myself on a dating like, app. Yes, and I was like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like really? I was like, oh, okay. You know, because one of my cousins was telling me, you know, um, on the app, you kind of scare away from people that, like, not wasting my time. For yes. Because these people that are on the app, paying people that are on the app are... You have intentions. Yeah. And, they, and they're serious. Mm -hmm. Well, they're supposed to be serious, you know? Mm -hmm. So I come across people that are really serious. And I was like, oh, wow. So it was refreshing to see, like, men actually knowing what they want and being serious about being in a relationship. Yeah. And there are real strategies that people can use, both men and women, to filter through foolishness. Yeah. Number one, people who are paying to be on apps. Right. Number two, looking for the answers. Like, let, let's stop just looking for handsome. Let's stop just looking for beautiful. Like, are they answering the questions on the apps? And are those questions in alignment with what you want? If the person says, I just want to go with the flow, you better go the other way, right? right? And, right. and so a lot of times people are forthcoming about what they want. We just don't want to listen mm -hmm. because he's 6'6 six, six and chocolatey and he got a beard. I'm going to ignore mm -hmm. everything else that's very clearly <laughs> problematic, yeah. right? Yeah. And then be surprised and then blame the app. Blame right. you. Right. Uh, not, you <laughs> not you, you. No, no, no. But I know. you. Right. That's, you. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point because yeah. when you look at the profile, because they give you a set of questions that we have to answer. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at people's profiles, like, bro, this is not what? <laughs> it's blank. <laughs> what like, are you come saying on. right now? So. Yeah. That's very true. You gotta be. If he just keep paying you with the what you doing messages, yeah, like you know what I'm saying, right, and yeah, yeah, I can't really care. No. I'm sorry for the men out there. That I just right. blew up, like you know what I mean. I get with this shit. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's true. You so, gotta have some type of substance. This, this. So, so, what do you see as far as you know things that women struggle with, with single women struggle with in the dating market? Women or men? I want to get to the women. We gonna get to the men, but I want to get to the women first. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, ready. I'm a men's advocate, so. Um, that they're struggling with and when they're trying to connect with men. Okay, yeah. So I would say that they feel that men are not well-rounded. Something is always missing. So it seems as though it occurs as though women are working on, you know, women, feminine energy has circular mindset and thinking. Men are more logical and linear thinking. And so when a woman is typically working on herself, she's not only working on her spiritual, she's working on her emotional, she's working on her physique she's ed getting educated she's joining sister circles and she's traveling right she's doing this whole travel noir thing right mm -hmm. so she's doing all these things and she'll meet a guy and maybe he's doing the educational thing or maybe he's gainfully employed but his spirituality is lacking he's not well traveled there's something that's missing and she feels like i don't want to raise him like in this area i don't want to drag him to church i don't want to make him get his passport like if he's so they women are wanting men to come more like ready-made turnkey mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. nicole what's your, what's your thoughts on this um i think the question was what is what are women struggling with it yeah and then, what do single women? women struggle when it comes to the dating market what do they struggle with um i think for me right now i'm struggling with 
manipulation. I feel like some people aren't forthcoming when they want to get access to you because, you know, women were so like nurturing and we're like this almost like this pretty soft little thing and everybody wants, oh, I want this right now. And then people will do anything to get it. And whether that's like lying or manipulating or making your intentions kind of be like, like they're this way, but they're really that way. Mm -hmm. And so I think the biggest struggle for me right now is just like trying to sift through that and be patient and um, trust that with time, people's masks fall off, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just trying to be consistent with that and just getting through the kind of BS. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Was, this this one's going to be interesting. What, what do men... What do y'all think men struggle with when it comes to the dating market with women? From what I've heard, it's the pressure mm -hmm. of having to um, to meet the the grand expectation and the unrealistic, the unrealistic, expectation. unrealistic. Right. Mm, right. the unrealistic and the grand expectations. And for me, particularly, I don't, I honestly don't think that reasonable women are demanding something that is ridiculous i think that what makes it ridiculous is that the resources and the support don't exist for a woman to demand a man to be as traditional as she would like so what i mean by that is you know we'll use women as an example if we expect our women to be able to cook and clean then we need to bring home mech back in school if we expect our men to be handy and to be able to handle financials then we need to make a focus of that in school mm -hmm. and uh, maybe a woman is not going to get home mech but there are Girl Scouts, I know there's Boy Scouts of America as well, but there are groups and opportunities for young ladies to be groomed in a fashion where they can learn to cook or they can learn to do some of these domestic things that can can create a house, shift the house into a home, whereas men don't have that, right? So if you're a man and you want to be high value, right, you want to be a high value man and you want to have all these things, you're less likely to find a group organically, meaning away from your parents, like your parents, somebody in your network, somebody on your block, right? You're less likely to find that than a, than a young lady would. So I feel like that's what makes it increasingly um, unfair. I feel I, I put that on society. It's our responsibility as a collective. If we're going to say this is what a man is, then we need to create resources at the ground level so that the, so that men can glean from that. They can eat from that and become the man that they desire. Yeah, I, mean, I think. I feel, oh, go ahead. Yep. I feel, I, I agree with you, but then I disagree with you at the same time. Because we're in 2023, right? Mm -hmm. Going into 2024, there's resources all over the place. So if we don't know, because as a woman, if we don't know something, we're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it should be the same thing with men. If you don't have the resource, or if you, don't, if you didn't grow up knowing this, then go find that. Mm -hmm. Because you can go through YouTube. You can, there's classes. There's... Mm -hmm. There's mentorship for men. There's a whole bunch of different things out there that you can search for mm -hmm. so you don't have that excuse. I don't think I, it's at I the think, same scale. Yeah, I think, and I, I, I get where you're coming from, mm -hmm. but being a man and looking at these resources, I'm going to be honest with you, there's not as many resources available to the young black men and black boys as there are to black sports. women. Like You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, even when we try to look up for our businesses, the specific grants. Loans, loans, grants, um, just for black men, there's rarely any, there's none. But when you type in, I take out black it. men and put black <laughs> women, there's yeah, a whole yeah, list yeah. of those motherfuckers. <laughs> and, you know, even when it comes to the workforce, you know, sometimes, and I'm not saying this is in a negative way, but sometimes the employer might hire that woman because it's looked at more as a diversity hire than that man that's who equally is as qualified. But let me get the woman because it'll go towards my quota or whatever the case is. Like, you know, so... I'm saying that there is certain disadvantages that men have to yeah. face, and I'm not saying that's an excuse, yeah. but it is something that we do have I to. I remember you know, when challenge. I was looking up loans for um for our business, and I was talking to one of my friends that worked at a bank, and he was telling me, "Yeah, I might want to consider getting a female calls and make it easy for you." Like I was like, "Damn, yeah, like you can't real. get nothing like just us." And she's like, it's tough. And I think as a woman, too, me being a, a coach, there are certain privileges that I have as a woman that make it really hard for me to understand what men go through because I'm walking and I don't even recognize the privileges that I have mm -hmm. and they really actually exist. It, it, it happens in focus groups. It happens when, you know, not just in coaching, like when I do my one-on-ones more so like when I'm doing group focus groups and I'm intentional about uh, retrieving information about men's experiences. Yeah. And when there's a collective response, like the entire group of men are nodding in agreement. I'm the only one looking there like really this exists. Mm -hmm. It's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember one time I had a focus group and one of the guys said that his biggest challenge with women is that he feels that women are ungrateful. 
And I'm thinking mm. that's his experience. Right. Until I looked on the Zoom, right? Because it was everybody during the says. pandemic. And everybody's like, mm-hmm, yeah, like, Amen. like, like, Amen. like, 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 you know, somebody said the sky was blue. Like, it was very natural. Right. Yeah. It, it didn't even grieve them. It didn't bother them. It wasn't like an uproar. There wasn't something that they wanted to discuss and get into and to delve into. Mm-hmm. I was the one that wanted to delve into it because I had not heard this before mm-hmm. or, or it didn't, it didn't, it didn't like click. Because if I have multiple you know, one-on-ones or group and, and a guy says it, I'm not thinking like, well, I heard the last three gentlemen that I coached say the same thing. Yeah. It doesn't happen like that. So when I asked him for his feedback and he helped me to understand, it's just like, I give my girl a lot of grace. But when it's my, if I do the same thing that my girl does, it's World War Three. But let me tell you, Cassandra, I don't think that that's exclusive for men or women. I think one of the biggest issues is that we keep dividing the sexes and yeah. we really have very similar experiences. My group chat, they call me All Lives Alley because all I do is talk about, nope, women experience that. Nope, men experience that. Mm -hmm. Women will tell you the same thing. Men are ungrateful. Mm -hmm. I wash his clothes. I take care of his kid. I carried his kid. I I fixed his credit. I bought him a new car. We all have the same complaints. Mm -hmm. We have the same complaints. I think the issue is is that because we've become so divisive as a society, and I think even strategically amongst black men and black women, that we think that it's the other side that has the problem and not us. Mm -hmm. Just as you just said, that it it didn't click to you, like some of the the grace that we're given as women. I'm sure the guys, a conversation I have with my husband, I said, yo, when I walk down the street at night, I'm taking my keys and I'm putting it through my fingers, waiting for somebody to walk up on me. So I can, <laughs> right? He can walk through the streets at night with no concern. I'm sure men are not concerned about getting raped when right. they go to come home from the club or covering their drink so that no one puts a roofie in there. We all have right. things that we are worried about, that we're concerned about that the other doesn't. Correct. So again, it's more about realizing that we're both struggling in some way mm-hmm. and then how can we meet halfway so we can build 100%. a better society, a better community versus who has it worse off? Mm-hmm. Right. I agree. So what, what do you see um, as far as the struggles that some single men have when it comes to the dating market? Oh, man, it's plentiful. So, <laughs> uh, the, no, it, it is a struggle. So one thing, and I talk to Cassandra about this all the time, the unrealistic expectations where women will have a list that is extensive of what they require and desire out of a gentleman and they either don't have those things or can't match them. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, everything won't be an exact match. It's yin and yang for a reason, Mm -hmm. but compliment, let's be realistic. There was a woman, which is why I mentioned the six foot chocolate with the beard. Mm -hmm. So I have a post that says something about be the list. And she says, well, I can't be the list because my list has six foot chocolate with the beard. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, this is what I want you to think about. Obviously you're not gonna be an exact replica, (laughs) right? This is what I want you to think about. I want you to think about how desirable the six foot chocolate with the beard is. Are you just as desirable as that? Whatever Mm -hmm. society might mark that is. Uh, They might say it might be a big butt, flat stomach, big titties that sit up like this. Whatever society (laughs) may define as the most attractive characteristics in a woman, do you have that? Because you don't have to compete, sis. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the issues that guys are held to a standard many times that's unrealistic where, and again, I'm sure it's the other way around Mm -hmm. too, but in many times, very shallow, Mm. very shallow things. The Mm. things that will not give you sustenance, the Mm. things that will not allow you to have a lifelong committed relationship Mm -hmm. with your partner. He's six foot now, but who's gonna care when he's in a cane and he's now he's five five because y'all are 70 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Who cares about her titty standing up like this when she done birthed three of your kids? Like these are the things that people are looking into that that don't have longevity. Mm -hmm. And that's why our relationships are shit. That is that's great. Um, cause on our show, plenty of times we have women who say, "Yeah, I had the perfect guy, but you know, he just he wasn't quite Eddie Murphy enough." Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, damn, like he had had every characteristic, but because he's not a comedian or he didn't make you laugh as much, you automatically disqualified him. You know what I mean? So that goes to the you know, a man could check off nine out of ten, but if he ain't ten out of ten, then now it's oh, well, I'm settling. You know, we hear that a lot of times. Like, if they don't get ten out of ten, then they're settling. Like, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. that can make it difficult for men. Hard, hard working, just honest men. I want to treat a woman easy right. For men, because he won. To read out, he won. Because oh, you can look at it like if, that. Yep. You know, if, if the complaint is is that women are ungrateful, inherently ungrateful, right? Meaning like it's World War Three. If I do something, she does the same thing. Then he's, you know, by by proxy, he's been eliminated out of having to deal with her, having this laundry list of expectations mm-hmm. that he's not going to be able to meet because he's a human being. So. 
I one of the things that I that I you know encourage men to experience and rec- recognize is like one choose a woman that chooses you, right? And if somebody says if somebody's showing showing you who they are, like they say, believe them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So don't you know a woman who feels so. And and also I kind of want to add a little bit of balance to this. There are things that women ask of men that seem unreasonable, but a lot of them can be traced biologically, right, to a primitive experience. And one of the reasons why women do want a man that's funny is because some women are neurodivergent or some women are a little bit neurotic and they have a hard time with their anxiety and having some comic relief is more survival then it is superficial. Mm-hmm. It occurs as superficial, but really biologically what she's saying is I'm in, I'm not really capable of regulating my emotions to the best of my ability. And I've noticed that when I'm with a man who makes me laugh, it helps me to see, like, have levity and lightness in my life. Mm. So, you know, it's hard when we hear these conversations. Like, I've, I've seen some of these things, like, online where people are talking, women are giving their experiences and things that they want. And a lot of times I'm looking at it like, that's science. Mm-hmm. The, way the way it came out was rough. It was nasty. Yeah, right. But, the same thing with the height. Like yeah. it, it is biological, right. right? Like the assumption is is that a taller man, a more buff man, is going to be more likely to protect. Mm-hmm. So right. But then we also are in 2023, and we have to leave like the caveman ideology behind, right? And have to be more realistic, right? Yeah. And so that's one of the issues. But the guys ain't they not innocent either. There's a lot of unrealistic expectations that are coming from that side. And that's why I said we're not that different as we like to imagine what's, ourselves to be. Some of the unrealistic expectations you have Ooh, The number one biggest one that I 100% agree on mm-hmm. is this expectation of a financial split, a 50-50 split, or something close to that, 60-40. Mm-hmm. We are in a capitalistic society. It is realistic that two parties are contributing to the household relatively equally financially. However, guys don't see, seemingly, some guys don't see the household responsibility being that 50-50 split. Mm-hmm. So if I'm contributing to the household in terms of finances as equally as you are, mm-hmm. but you're not changing as many diapers, you're not doing as much laundry, you're not cooking the meals, that work is way harder. Yeah, way harder. I would much rather go back to work mm-hmm. than be a stay-at-home mom. And I say that, I love you, baby. Right? <laughs> it, it is hard. It is hard as hell. And I, I think, relatively speaking, gentlemen don't appreciate that. Yeah. So that's one of the things that personally bothers me when I see these conversations online. Yeah. And and the, this falsehood around men paying 100%. What major city? New York? Miami? Mm-hmm. Chicago? L.A.? There's no way that we can live a comfortable life for the most part if there's only one income. Mm-hmm. So... At, and we talk a lot of shit, but in reality, a lot of women are contributing that 50 percent. Mm-hmm. But that 50 percent is not being given in the household responsibility, which is way more work. Mm-hmm. I think that's um, and I think that's for even when we have these conversations, I don't think we ever mean 50 with the bills. But again, if my all my money does have to go to the bills, I'm not gonna be able to save as much money for a rainy day. Like, you know, what I mean, so. Therefore, your money can be used to go into savings or mm-hmm. maybe you can use that money to invest into, you know, stocks or whatever the case is. It doesn't have to be to the bills, but just know I'm I'm paying all the bills. I'm not going to have money to go on vacations. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That There's not that much leftover money I'm going to have to just do X, Y, and Z. So right. therefore, you can think, use your money for other things. I don't even like, think that's a big argument, though. Mm-hmm. I think the bigger argument that we hear is that for the gentlemen who are in a position to pay 100 percent and still live a comfortable lifestyle, they yeah. think that that's enough. But that's still unreasonable because if you're working 50 hours a week, 128 hours is to this baby Mm -hmm. and this household. So even if you are paying all the bills, that still does not alleviate your responsibility to contributing to the household somewhat. Of course, if that woman is home from eight to five when you're out, yes, she needs to be holding you down. But then when you come home at six o'clock, don't think that you're going to drop your shoes and just go play the game. Like you still have to contribute to that household because... That woman is working all day, seven days a week, no vacation, no pay time, no sick. So even working a full-time job and contributing 100% is still not equivalent to a stay-at-home mom to children. And this is under the assumptions that they got kids. Yes, 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 children. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I think I think that I don't have a, I don't disagree with anything you said. I think right. a man should also contribute to the household. Um, but again, are women really communicating that when we do have these conversations? Because a lot of times women would just say the man has to provide everything. And there is no other like, well, and he also has to do it like uh, most women are just pro, um, they're just saying that a man should provide. They're not saying anything else. So, again, men are getting confused because that's all we hear is you have to provide 100 percent. Right. And it just ends at that. It's a period. There's nothing else. after. Any that. woman who is saying that is more than likely speaking from theory, theoretically. Mm-hmm. So she is imagining what life would be like. And she is pulling and drawing information from other social media 
posts, short clips, chopped up pieces of information. Yes. And she is deciding, and it's also coming from fear of seeing your mom or your grandmother, sans father, dad is not in the home, grandpa is not there, and I don't want to be that. I'm rejecting what I saw. Yes. And so they're in, they are not able to communicate effectively and specifically. So what they end up doing is over communicating an argument that think that they believe lands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. think that the point that they're making, that's it. Like they hit the target and that's because they're living from theory. But any woman, and I, th- and I know at least on this, I don't know you too much yet. I don't, do you have any kids? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Any woman that has, when, once you, once you have that baby and you recognize what it takes to keep that baby just alive, Mm -hmm. forget educated and enriched, Mm. just to keep this baby alive for that first year, it changes in the entire dialogue. And herein lies the description that Allison is not able to eloquently give and provide, which is it's around the clock constant consistent. You're not getting a thank you. You're not getting a plaque. You don't, your baby. You are literally getting shitted on. Yeah. (laughs) Like literally, literally Literally. you're not, nobody is going to see that you, that you had a perfect week and now you get a plaque on the wall, and so you get to have drinks and food on us. Mm-hmm. There is none of that. It's a thankless job, and you have to show up every single day. You don't have a moment to break down. You cannot afford to break down. And so I think that I think what happens is, is that home life, people want a playhouse. Mm-hmm. We want a playhouse. We want to play. We want to play what we didn't have. When we reflect back on what we didn't have, we're projecting now. And when we project these ideals without really understanding what it takes, that's where the divisiveness comes in. No, you're supposed to be doing this and you're supposed to be doing that. And it's like, come on now, really? Like, who cares if I wash three to four dishes and none of them are mine? Like, really? Come on now. Mm -hmm. It's our house. Mm -hmm. And so the hour is missing. So I do appreciate, Allison, that you bring in the the fact of the matter that these gender wars, we're we're doing less good for one another. The reason why I appreciate being a woman and being able to speak for some of the men's experiences, I'm not a men's expert, just an advocate, is that if you, as an example, if I'm going to get a car, right, I have a car, and I know that this car runs on gas, it needs oil, I got to change the oil, I got to do all these things, I know this is how this car is ran. You know what people do when they get in a car? They get in a car and they don't put the gas in, and when they're about to get to their destination and they start to see that the car is not really moving as much as they wanted to, mm-hmm. what do they start doing? They look at the tank and they're like, damn, it's on. Awesome. What do you start doing? You start banging the car. Come on, baby. Don't fail on me. Yeah. You start talking to the car. You don't talk to yourself. You don't be like, Cassandra, have some accountability. You should put some gas in your car. No, you end up projecting the frustration on the car to blame the car for what it's naturally not able to do because you did not serve it. Mm. And so when you're in a relationship and you're looking at the woman that you have or the man that you have and now they're run down because you didn't take the time to recognize you need gasoline, I need water, right? I'm not going to put water in, in the gasoline tank. Water helps me run and be efficient. Gasoline helps this car. So I don't, that's what the problem with the reciprocity conversation is like, it has to look the exact same way in reciprocity. That's not reciprocity. Mm-hmm. Reciprocity means I'm able to identify and observe and, and, and give you what you need because that's what you need. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to question you. I'm not going to argue. you. So if women need a little bit of tenderness and a little, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. A little bit of softness. <laughs> You know, women need that. Uh, so I tell men, just go ahead and give it, right? Mm. And if a gentleman, if a man needs your ear, he needs you to not judge him, he needs you to believe him, just go ahead and give it. Mm. Like, what to what to what does it charge you mm. to give somebody something that you don't understand why it why it fuels them? Just go ahead and, and, and provide. I love that metaphor. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. I, I think um, <laughs> a lot of the times in these conversations, you know, we are living either vicariously through some, somebody else's past yeah. trauma yeah. Um, a lot of us never even experienced the trauma that we'd be talking about. Yes. And we want to, you know, we're, we're speaking from a fear monger aspect. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even with the new Color Purple movie that's coming out, mm-hmm. um, I've never been a fan of Color Purple mm-hmm. or any movies like that because it does you seem watch very. Color Purple? Huh? You watch Color Purple? Yeah, I seen most of it. Like, yeah, I seen most of it. <laughs> but I, I've never finished the whole thing because I don't like watching yeah, movies like no that movies. because, you know, it just doesn't. It shows a level of dysfunction within a black community, which was at the time is true. But when you keep recycling these same cont- uh, like content, like slave movies, same yeah, idea. it's like that. Yeah, then it comes yeah. now. Yeah. It's like, oh man, I seen how she was living. I'm no way I'm gonna put, put myself in that mm-hmm. situation. And now you don't have a tendency to value family no more because you mm-hmm. view a man or a woman might either utilize you or take advantage of you. Now we just like, you know what? I'd rather be single. I don't yeah. need a man. I don't need a woman. And that's where these conversations become so divisive. That part. Um, and this this next topic I do want to talk about because it was it's pretty interesting to me. Um, is unconditional love a real expectation for men or is just that 
is that like a romantic illusion? And I'll and I'll and I'll set this right. Um, recently, we went to um, a Black Men's Brunch, right? Mm -hmm. it, was, um, it was hosted by 500 um, Men Making a Difference mm -hmm. and uh, um, the mayor um, Eric Adams. And the amount of people that we seen that watched our show, Black men that we seen that watched our show, and we're just like, you know what? I appreciate what y'all doing because I feel like there's a platform for me to be heard. Like, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. we don't never disrespect our guests, but you know, we are able to articulate ourselves well in a way where black men be like, damn, you know what? I did have that same experience or whatever the case is, right? So, you know, obviously you go back into the fear monger. You know, we always hear this Chris Rock quote, mm -hmm. you know, only a woman, uh, woman, children, and dogs are loved unconditionally. Men are only loved based off if they can provide, you know what I mean? Right. And so that got a lot of men saying, well, damn, is is unconditional love something I could really obtain or is that just a fallacy? Well, what's your thoughts on that? And I want to start here with Nicole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I think it's healthy that love comes with conditions. Mm -hmm. Like I have boundaries. I have the condition that you don't abuse me, right? right? I have the condition that you respect me. And I think that's really healthy. Um, and I can love black people unconditionally, but not you know, have a relationship with all black people or have a friendship with all black people. Mm -hmm. um, but I can still have an unconditional love in my heart for us. And so I think personally it's healthy. And I think that women are not loved unconditionally. I think that there's a condition with the women in your life that they respect you. There's a condition with the, the women in your life that if you are getting married, that you do bear this child, right? And so there's conditions and expectations placed upon all of us. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong or you guys have a different opinion. No, you're absolutely right. All all love is conditioned, e even even for dogs. Um, as uh, as no, right, right. So like as as a new mom, mm -hmm. um, if I had a dog that did a little snip 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 at my baby, that dog is out the door. So this mm -hmm. whole idea of oh, it only women, babies, or and children and dogs is absolutely not true. I think all love is conditioned. It should be conditioned. And if that were the case, then no woman would ever get left. Right. right. They would never be divorced. Right. They would never, um, w which is initiated by the husband in that particular case, they would never be broken up with. If that was the case that women are the only ones who are unconditionally loved, then we would never have it where men would leave their woman. Mm -hmm. Men leave women all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Men put women in positions. But you don't know if he loved that woman unconditionally. Though. That's right. the point. Right. That's the point. So so the line is, is that only women, children and dogs are loved unconditionally. No, but, but what I'm saying is. A man can leave a woman, but you don't know if he loved her unconditionally. That's what I'm saying. Like he might have never loved her. Like, he might have never loved her. He mm -hmm. left. That's why he left her. Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. But I'm saying if he did love her yeah. unconditionally, she could do whatever she wants. A dog, if you love a dog unconditionally, he could eat your sneakers, rip up the couch, all this, and you taking it. You know. Well, what let I mean? me ask you: Have I'm, you met a man that loved a woman unconditionally? Have I met a man that? Okay. Outside, outside of my mother, like, I don't, I've not met, there, I've loved women unconditionally, yeah, but obviously I'm not with them no there, more, like, you know what I'm saying? There are but, but how, but, how, right, yeah. but why, so why aren't the two of you together? You and one woman that you loved unconditionally, why the two of you aren't together? Um, the one that I loved unconditionally. I <laughs> yeah, I did, she definitely <laughs> said that. Um, the one woman I, I, well, a couple of women I loved unconditionally, they didn't want a relationship. They was, they wanted to focus on their career. And okay, so they, they were the ones who ended it each and every time. Yeah. For sure. So let me so let me ask you this: Because you love somebody unconditionally, do you have to be with them? Well, why would you leave? What because would cause you, you can, to leave? You can love somebody, but not but come to the self realization that you can't be with them. So that may be that then may, that's that, a condition that that's a, that would still that? support that would still support what Chris Rock is stating. So even if if whatever Chris Rock is saying that is occurring where. Women and children and dogs are taking, being taken care of, but men are not being cared for in that same way. Mm -hmm. Maybe for that particular man who is not being cared for it any longer, he was still loved, but something was getting in the way of him mm -hmm. being able to experience the love that he wanted because it was causing uh, like unfair harm, right? Mm -hmm. So in the case, like Chris Rock admitted that he was cheating on his wife, mm -hmm. right? And so their relationship dissolved. Now, unconditionally speaking, he should be able to slang his dangling anywhere his yes. wife still stay. Right. But that is causing a lot of harm, trauma. So she just she decides to dissolve the marriage. Right. And so he might feel like, well, this is I'm not loved unconditionally because there shouldn't be any conditions to the love that you have for me. Mm -hmm. Right. So then either way that you that you you slice it on one or the other. It still supports the fact that either someone is going to leave mm -hmm. or someone is not going to be doing the loving. Right, so mm. like, is that unconditional love? Did he unconditionally love his wife when he continued to cheat on her? Hmm. I mean, <laughs> why, why not? 
I'm just, I'm saying because no, because well, love I don't so I don't like the unconditional conversation I like aligned love conversations mm -hmm. because like there's even a scripture where they talk about it talks about love and it says that you know even if I were to give charity even if I was to do all these things but have not love then it's not that mm -hmm. so I like to bring into current date and time if I cooked for you but I didn't cook with love it's like I didn't cook at all right mm -hmm. if i massage your body right if they i'm in a relationship with somebody if i massage his body and i'm just doing it begrudgingly it's like i didn't do it at all right it's like what's that? like don't do that yeah and so sometimes we, we like for allison and i we have a workshop that we do that we run called love wins and people get they hyperventilate mm -hmm. when you say that love wins and you say that love is a good thing and then they start to feel like you're saying something that love is like the be all end all like you know, that you, like, as if we're saying all you need is love. No, love is a conduit and it's something to be aligned to something. It's not something that operates all on, on its own. Mm -hmm. So one of the analogies that I give is like a door, right? You guys ever seen those doors that have the track and the wheel mm -hmm. at the top? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A farm I look door. At, farm door yeah. Right, like a, like a farm door. I kind of look at love in that in that kind of way. So if I have you know, love and I have it attached to something and it's aligned, then I can move that door back and forth easily. But if it's off track a bit, you can't really make that door move. Mm -hmm. And I use the same the same analogy when I talk about emotions versus logic. Because when men look at themselves and they and they and they perceive a woman in her emotion, they feel that her emotion is is irrelevant or it's not it's not positive or it's or it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, it's to be aligned. That's why God designed us the way that he has. Because with your logic, right, your linear thinking coupled with my circular thinking, we can make things run. But if I'm always in my emotions and I'm thinking circular, I can't move forward. And if you're moving forward, you can't think well-rounded. Mm -hmm. You can't consider the women and children and the and the and you know all the other people that are going to be affected because you're on go. Like you got one speed and it's go. Mm -hmm. And you need a woman that's going to be there to be like, no, but consider this, but consider this, but consider this. Mm -hmm. Here lies the nagging. Mm -hmm. It has its it has its its point. But when you uh, when you, whether it's we're talking about aligning with love with something or emotions and logic in this case when it comes to love unconditionally unconditional love would not attach itself to infidelity mm -hmm. unconditional love would not attach itself to being out of integrity that's not loving that's fair i think sometimes when, I, when we look at this conversation about unconditional love again it goes back down to the finances because mm -hmm. when we have these conversations the main emphasis on men mm -hmm. is finances right so what men are saying is well if i lose my job my woman might not have the same level of respect for me um, she might leave me to go with somebody who might have more money. We have we have women on the show say, if you lose your job, I'm just go get somebody with a different bag. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So men are. I'm not saying that with all women, obviously, but some men are seeing that type of content, mm -hmm. obviously now with social media, mm -hmm. and they're like, damn, you know, there's that much. There's another layer of pressure on me now yes. to perform, and if I don't perform, then my woman is not going to treat me the same, well, and therefore go out her way maybe to look for somebody to replace me. And have aspect. you ever studied the Great Depression? No, not I've never studied it, but yeah. I love men, I promise y'all. But here's the thing: when men feel pressure, they do something that there's a term that they that I've heard. They say that men, their feet do the voting. When the Great Depression happened, and it was hard to find jobs and it was hard to run a household, it was a woman that left. It was men, mm -hmm. which is why the civil rights, when the civil rights ever started happening, we started talking about women and children and, and, and creating safety nets for women and children and saying that the man couldn't be in the home. That's where it stemmed from. So I know we don't like to talk about the Great Depression part. We just like to blame women by saying that, well, you kept the men out of the home so that you guys could get TANF, so that you guys can get um, support Section and, 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 and Section yeah. 8 and all these things. Mm. But it was designed because the government couldn't, couldn't, couldn't bank on men to stay in their place. Men have left. Unfortunately, there's a biological response that men experience when they're under pressure that causes them to leave, whether it's physically or mentally check out. It actually happens, which is why men need support, right? So that when you guys are feeling that kind of pressure, you know what to do so you can like bear the weight of life. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of the things that are happening that women are seeing, right, is that women are basically saying, I'm going to leave you before you leave me. They don't even know it. This is This is if you believe in the premise of DNA, like generational trauma, mm -hmm. like and trauma living in the, in the DNA. And even mm -hmm. if you haven't like been through it and experienced it yourself, you're still going to respond in that way. Mm -hmm. This is a reactionary. This is not, this is not by, this is not original design. Mm -hmm. This is women in response to the fear of being left. And truth be told, if a man loses his job and loses everything, 100% he's left emotionally and mentally. He's gone. He's not present. 
he's not feeling good in him in his mind, his heart, his body, his spirit. When was the Great Depression? That was in the 1920s. Okay, I have to do more research about that. Cause you said when men lost their jobs, they left the household. Oh yeah, it was big. And where where? It was big. No, we don't know. <laughs> it was a phenomenon. Mm. It was a phenomenon, and also like there were some things that happened with the stocks. It was um during the Dust Bowl, like the Great Depression and the mm -hmm. Dust Bowl and all these things. They had to put these safety nets in place because women and ch well, children, of course, cannot work. But what what were we gonna do? And so what happened was is that some women, Chayama, want to cut this part out. But just to give you the history, what happened was is that some of the men that did stay and they couldn't find jobs, women started to go into the workforce even then, and the men felt so threatened in their masculinity, masculinity that what skyrocketed was abuse, was domestic violence. Yeah. That's how a lot of these systems came into play because of what was happening when men were under pressure. Mm -hmm. The response that the government took was to protect women and children mm -hmm. because at that given point in time, the, I'm assuming, I'm, I make the assumption that the government didn't understand that men needed a certain kind of like mental support because therapy wasn't popular then. But I would also say too that- so the I'm gonna look that up. So the men were losing their jobs and they women were. were getting jobs? Yeah, they had, yes. I thought there was no jobs, that's why men were, so how are the women getting the jobs? Like? They started to do domestic things. They started, this is, we're talking about over time. We're not talking about immediately, right? So mm. I'm condensing a very long piece of history in like mm. a five minute bit. Mm. But they started to do domestic things, trading, doing things, cooking, anything in the home with other people who may have had money. But there were men who were jumping out of windows, committing suicide, physically exiting a relationship, whether like unaliving themselves or they were, you know, they, they just physically left. Like, they, we do not know where they went. We do not know if they're still around or not. Mm -hmm. We do not, some, some men have actually left, and when things started to turn over, they went somewhere else, they actually started a relationship. New with family home, elsewhere, yes. Entire, carpet baggers. Yeah, yeah, new family. What's it this is a carpet bag. I think the conversation is like the core of the conversation is men don't feel valuable unless they can provide. Right. And right. so yes. when you don't, feel valuable within yourself it affects the way that you're insecure you're insecure right mm -hmm. and then that even shows up so when your value is attached to production it's like if you feel bad you're like i don't know why this person's sitting next to me and they want me while i'm feeling like this I'm not, you know what i mean and so yeah. you can even project that onto your partner mm -hmm. um and so i think the conversation kind of shifts from whose fault it is to like you just need emotional support oh, yeah. when we it, we're, we're an investment. We're investing yes. in ourselves like a stock. It's going to yes. go up and down. Yes. So if your value is attached to money, you know, how are you going to address it when the stock is down? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's um that's a valid point. And again, when we go back to your affirmations, mm -hmm. uh, I think that is important. Like, you know what I mean? I know if I was down and I lost my job, what will make me feel supported is my woman saying, you know what? I'm still here. We're going to get through this. You know what I mean? Like, we gonna, you know, those right. affirmations will make me, mm -hmm. it, will be, it will build me back up because women's words are, Drew said this all the time, women's words are powerful. Mm -hmm. But if I lose my job and you're just now negative on me, like, damn, yeah. how are we going to, you ain't paying that's no bills and how am I going to support? Like, then that's like, damn, like, you know what I mean? I'm already dealing with enough. Like, I don't need this energy. Like, you get what right. I'm saying? So yeah. building that life into each other, black men and yep. black women can definitely help. Um, this next topic I want to get into is how can men set bound boundaries without overstepping because i think some men do struggle in that aspect they want to set boundaries but then again you know we don't want to come off looking like you know we trying to force y'all like you know what i mean so for example me. if you know um i don't like how you speak to me in a certain tone right i might tell you like listen how you talk to me is disrespectful and you might look back at it as well you're trying to control me or you're trying to dictate my tone towards you and i'm just trying to set a boundary i don't want to be dis i don't want to have that disrespectful tone towards me that I'm letting you know, but now it comes off like, okay, you're trying to control my act. You don't want me to speak up, but I'm a woman. You don't want me to speak up. You just want me to be quiet. And no, that's not what I'm saying. I just want you to talk to me in a, in a respectful tone. Like, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, do y'all see, well, how can men establish those type of boundaries within the um, dynamic of a relationship without overstepping necessarily? You just communicate like you just did. Yeah. I think that's like men that I've dated, oftentimes they shut down. Right. Um, and so they don't communicate at all because they have a hard time understanding how they're feeling. And so sometimes, like, again, like we can be each other's biggest trigger. If I'm yeah. talking to you, like how your mom used to talk to you and she used to make you feel like that. Yeah. And you're not expressing that to me. You're just shutting down. You're just ignoring me for weeks or months. And you're just like, and then you try to, you know what I mean? When things settle down, you're like, hey, let's communicate. And that's not healthy. So I think understanding yourself first is a big one, a big but one. oftentimes black men won't center themselves enough to, to understand themselves because they're oftentimes like 
geared towards focusing on other people and their value is outside of themselves. And so if you don't understand yourself and how you're feeling and your emotions and shame and tone and everything that you just communicated, it's a totally lot of people have a hard time communicating that. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, right. But if you can communicate that in a healthy way, I don't see why that's not within itself setting a boundary. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I know, I know I a big one we had on the show was um, should your, your, your boyfriend or husband have a saying what you wear outside? Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of women say, no, not at all. Right. I don't mind that. You say, I, I don't mind. I don't mind. No. Don't mind. See, and that's actually my point. I, yeah. I hate to take the mic from you for just a second, but mm -hmm. I think that we are making like sweeping indictments of whole people, like mm -hmm. billions of people based on three or four clips off of YouTube or Instagram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, back to your point in regards to the lack of support, right. the women that I know, if they found out that their partner lost their job, they're like, oh, my God, baby, let me draw your bath. Let me make you something to eat. And mm -hmm. then after that, we're going to fix up your resume and we're both mm -hmm. applying on your behalf and we're going to we're going to figure it out. Right. So I'm not negating that you've heard this, mm -hmm. but I don't think that that really reflects the majority. I don't think that right. the, I think the majority of women who love the partner that they have, which I assume if you're with your partner, you love them, are yeah. gonna be like, baby, what you think? You like this? Mm -hmm. Oh, baby, I think it's all right. No, all right, so I'm gonna pull out something else. Yeah. But if we're talking about what we see in clips and pieces here and there, then you may see that reflected. But I think most women are really okay with their partner having a say. Yeah. I want him to. I'm just saying clips. This is uh, people on the show. And so then women in the comments saying, yeah, they can't tell me what to wear outside. It's a, it's a couple of things. I will say this, right? I've had, the delivery makes a difference. I want to compartmentalize this a little bit. Okay. When a woman is in love, right. a guy wouldn't have to do so much. Mm -hmm. Right? So consider this. If you're a gentleman and you're making a comment that is natural to you and she's, she's rebuttaling, she's giving a hard time, consider the possibility that she may not love you. Period. Very simple. Because in a space of love, in the in, in that motion of love, it's very hard to resist giving somebody something that they're asking for, provided that you're healthy and they're healthy. Mm -hmm. There are controlling men. There are controlling women out there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when a man is indeed controlling and not that he's doing a controlling behavior or act, but rather that his personality is controlling, you you will more like more than likely incite someone rebelling because the natural human order is resistance to change. So you, so when a woman is saying you can you have a say like myself, Allison and Liz that are joining the couch with mm -hmm. me are saying I would do that. You're not there's nothing that you're changing in us mm -hmm. because it already lives inside of us to go ahead and give it. So if he's asking, he's not controlling anything. Mm -hmm. It's right. already there. Right. So a man who's who's causing who wants to cause a woman to do something more than likely met her a certain way mm -hmm. and it was fine when we were dating. It was fine for me to dress like that when we were dating. Now you want to control it, that it would be control. Right. Because that's not in me to 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 dress like I'm Susie, I'm, I'm Susie Homemaker. Mm -hmm. My my you know, my my MO is Kim Kardashian. I I, I want to dress like her. Mm -hmm. And now you don't want me to dress like her. The clothing isn't the issue. Yeah. The, exactly. The, that's not the root cause. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, someone who is trying to be controlling. There's right. someone who's afraid of being controlling, of being controlled. And it's also a lack of trust. Mm -hmm. If my husband saw me in an outfit and said, I don't think that's a good idea, I trust that he knows what he's talking about. Exactly. Something's off. You know, this your breast ain't looking too breasty right now. Your, right. your stomach is sticking out. You're not going to like the photos that come out. Or that color is not what, what's best to compliment your eyes. Or mm -hmm. He is saying this because he wants me to win. Mm -hmm. He right. wants what's in my best interest. Yeah. So the question really is, or do you really love this person? Do you really trust, trust. that they want what's best for you yes. over the outfit in itself? It's yes. not about the outfit. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. And I also wanted to touch on the boundary piece because mm. I just wanted to like, you know, see what other people thought. But one of the things that people get um, are mistaken when it comes to boundaries is bound when a man is holding boundaries, a woman is holding boundaries, you're not holding a boundary for someone else. That boundary is belongs to you you own it all mm -hmm. of it right. including the consequences thereafter mm -hmm. so if you have a hard boundary around the way that a woman speaks to you it's your responsibility first to convey what you need so so in other words saying i don't like when you speak to me like that will not suffice because what is that mm -hmm. i do not like it when you're speaking over me when i'm in the middle of my thought i want to be able to fully express myself before you cut me off. And if I'm going on too long, I would appreciate that you put up a finger or, or say something or we could use a code word when I'm going on too long so that you can make your point. But I need to get this out. Mm -hmm. 
And if she fails to consistently do that, you will let her know, babe, I love you. I find that I'm trying to express myself. You're not hearing me. If you cut me off again, I'm going to leave this conversation because we're obviously heated and we'll come back and revisit this in 20 minutes. Mm. So whoever is going to name the boundary, it's not enough to just state it, make a demand. That's a demand, right? That's beyond a request, right? You're making a demand. You want to a boundary. You're making the request of the person, but it's a demand on your own life. Mm -hmm. I need this boundary for me because it helps me to remain regulated and helps me to stay in the character and the position that I want to be in. So before the way that a man can learn how to maintain and establish boundaries is to first have a clear cut understanding of what boundaries really mean yeah. for him. That means from the before you've ever stated, right? There's a process to boundary creation, which is the forethought about it, like being able to conceptualize what really triggers me, what really bothers me, what yeah. do I need in place to keep this trigger from spiraling out of control, and what gets to happen if somebody betrays my boundary over and over again, even though I've reinforced it, mm -hmm. and which is to exit. Gotcha, the, gotcha. Yeah. As for in the conversation, do you think that um, allowing a person to finish what they're saying is, is more of a respect thing? Like, I respect you enough to listen to what you're saying before I respond? That's yeah, the listening, the listening to comprehend versus the listening, the listening to, to respond, just right. respond yeah. is an issue both black men and black men. Just women and men in general yeah, just have a hard true. time. We'll be, we're waiting to hear that word and then we just jump in. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like double dutch. Just, you, know, you know what I'm saying? So it's yes. like, instead of letting me hear out because you cut me halfway off. So yeah. if you cut me halfway off, it can sound offensive. But if you right. let me finish, okay, I understand where you was coming from. So, right. so honestly, it's not actually. A, so when we're bantering, right? Like, let's say. We're not recording, and let's say we all at a restaurant, we just chit chatting. Right. Do you really think we care if we cut each other off? Mm. No, because no. we uh -huh. all talking and chopping it up. We're having a really good time. I, I, try. Right. I still do care. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> most people. A lot of I, I get what you're saying, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I don't mean it like in a disrespectful way. I'm just mean like somebody makes a joke or whatever. Mm. Like we all raise. Like, we're all we're all contributing to the. But conversation. that's a different level of conversation, though. Understand exactly mm -hmm. in the conversation where we're having something more serious right. now we're, we're talking about emotional regulation mm -hmm. so it's what's happening internally is something that, that we have to think about what is causing the emotional regulation to come off kilter and what normally happens is it's not necessarily that we're answering to just respond what happens is is that someone said something and they've attacked someone's character mm -hmm. they've attacked their truth and so they're coming to actually not just respond, they're coming to defend. Uh, so mm -hmm. but I want to stand up for the people that interrupt because yeah. I sometimes do that. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why is because sometimes people will make 10 points in one whiff of, you know, a conversation. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, 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 let's back up to your mm -hmm. first point. Like you said, I felt attacked, a little disrespected. I need to address that. You've yeah. got to go to a whole other point and change yeah. the conversation. Yeah, and let's address that. that. Right. <laughs> you know I, what I'm but saying? I don't, I don't think that's interrupting, though, because if you're making 10 points, by the time you finish what you're saying, I don't remember what point two and three was. So right. we, mm -hmm. I think I think you should make a point. All right, let's talk about this and then move on to the, what else. What else is your grievance? Mm -hmm. you know I, mean? I think sometimes that can be, like you said, it is triggering. But again, sometimes when we get into these conversations, women are much more emotional mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so they might interpret something as you know oh wow i'm in my feelings right now it's that time of the month right now or whatever the case is. so i might look at that's it as fair. an attack when it really was never an attack that's to begin fair. with like you get mm -hmm. what i'm saying so now i have to now I have to negate how you felt to what i said mm -hmm. instead of you just listening to comprehend to what i said like now I, you made me feel a certain way now you negated everything i just said because you felt a certain way and i'm like that's not the point i'm trying to get at you yeah. get what i'm saying my so guy troy said that in one of his clips i remember he said he said the exact same thing something similar which is that if i'm expressing myself to my wife or i don't think he was talking about his wife in this case but he was just giving a generalization mm -hmm. and then she gets offended now i can't really talk about what i was originally talking about now i have to cater to your emotions right. and feelings mm -hmm. what would you guys i know that i'm not supposed to be interviewing y'all but i'm just <laughs> curious yeah. what would you guys prefer a woman do um in, in that in situation, that situation? Mm -hmm. uh say I'm not in the right emotional um, okay. to handle this conversation. Maybe we can have it later on when yeah. I'm feeling like what you said it. about coming back to the conversation, um, letting both people yeah. just either cool off, you know yeah. what I mean? Because in the heat of the moment, people just say something that they just want to get across. Oh, I just want to make you feel bad. Or I just want to say this because I know it's going to get to you. Whatever the case is, like let's just revisit this conversation. Like you know So you I mean? wouldn't feel like every time it's her turn, she wants to stop the conversation? Huh? Every time it's her turn, what do you mean? So like you wouldn't if she says, "Hey, I need a, I need a beat." Would you think that you might feel like, "Okay, 
every time I'm talking to you about something that you're doing, when it's mm. your turn, when it's when you the bad guy, mm. now you need a break. But when it's my turn, oh, I'm yeah. doing something that bothers you. You got to talk about it right now. But but see, that's where the emotional intelligence come in. You got to be able to to give what you want. You know what I mean? So if if you need time when you arguing, and I say I need time this time, you should be able to understand that because you yeah. need the same thing when it's yeah, your turn. I, I think you know. Segwaying into this, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, this is why he the Kobo site. Like, you know, we we always hear this term emotional intelligence, right? And I don't, you know, that's like one of the terms that I think we need to leave in 2023 as we go into 2023. You think so? Well, I like that. Oh, because what? it's like the word narcissist. Motherfuckers oh, just saying this shit, like you know what I'm saying. Nobody really. Oh thinks my god. What it, it is abuse. Like, you know what I'm saying. So, <laughs> bro, really I hate narcissists. Can bro. we can we just explain or can y'all explain what? emotionally intelligent means and do you think most people are capable of handling handling somebody who's emotionally intelligent i think that he i think that his example in layman's terms is perfect mm. right it uh, being emotionally intelligent is one being able to understand your emotions versus somebody else's mm -hmm. being able to regulate your own emotions and being able to know when when you've met your like well before you've met your peak mm. you don't want to wait till your your emotional stability has expired and now you find off the handle. You want to be able to understand where you're coming from. But I think that what's more important than emotional intelligence, per se, is that conversation is empathy. Mm -hmm. So when somebody asks me questions like, well, how do I know if I got a good man or not? Or how do, I, how do I know if I'm with a good woman or not? It's the ability to put yourself in somebody else's shoes as them. Mm -hmm. Not if I was, well, if I was you, oh, you good. You good, because if it was me. Mm -hmm. I'd have done X, Y, Z. You're putting yourself in their shoes. No, you need to be in their shoes as them. So what would, you know, an example that I like to use sometimes is like if I'm a, if I'm five foot two, um, I'm a woman and I'm 108 pounds soaking wet and I feel threatened, I may fawn, right? We have primitive responses, fight, flight, freeze, fawn. Fawning is like playing dead, playing nice, right? Mm -hmm. I might fawn. That's when you see women who are being, you know, follow who are who are like, oh, you know, I'm just, I'm good, you know, I don't want to talk. And she's being super nice. And people in the comments like, oh, if that was me, I would have went off. Da da da. She can't afford to be mean because she can't back it up. Mm -hmm. And if I'm a six foot three guy and I'm like 260 pounds, you know, you know, all on my own, mm -hmm. and so, and I feel and I feel threatened, I can be confrontational. So a, a man who's like six foot three and his girl is the five foot woman, right? And he might look at his girl like, oh, you, you, you like this guy. It. Yeah, yeah. You're entertaining him. You got him thinking that you want him. What you doing? That is her. That is her response in the mode of feeling threatened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's fighting for her life in that moment. She needs kudos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She needs she needs a round of, a round of applause. Mm -hmm. That's empathy. Gotcha. If somebody has the capacity to put themselves in your shoes as you, that's what makes a person a good, healthy person. I really like your point. I want to just add to it as well. Like from my perspective is when I'm triggered and if you love me, I can't have my trigger trigger you. Like I'm hoping that my trigger doesn't trigger you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like that to me is emotional intelligence that I can be triggered and talk through it mm -hmm. like, and be anxious and be upset and you don't gaslight or blame right. or make it worse or, or you know what I mean? Or get defensive. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can sit and you can listen and and it's not me against you or us against each other. It's us against the problem. Yes. What's the problem right now? Mm -hmm. right. You know, and that to me is an emotionally intelligent man. If I love that. that. Yeah. Got you. What's your thoughts on this? Um, I think uh, another element that we should discuss is reading the room. Mm -hmm. So a part of emotional intelligence is not only being aware of your emotions, being aware of the other person, and how they need to respond, but deciding what's appropriate in the moment right now. Mm. So I need to just read the room. Like, is this a time that I need to bring up the fact that you were rude to my mom when she came to visit for Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. But I know that you just had a tough day at work. Like, being able to read the room and decide when is the appropriate time to bring up X, Y, Z is mm -hmm. also an important part of emotional intelligence. I like mm. that. Yeah. I think, um, you know, sometimes when we have these conversations, um, we always stress emotionally intelligence, right? But, you know, sometimes when men are expressing themselves or just, you know, women have vouched for men to be more expressive of their emotions. <laughs> right. remember, I remember a couple of years ago, we was very adamant about, you know, men are very stoic. They don't mm -hmm. show their emotions. And not um, that I'm sassy. I was going to say that now that men are showing their emotions, <laughs> and I'm not even saying in a sassy way, but sometimes that's just automatically perceived. If I feel yes. some type of way, oh, you're sassy because a real man wouldn't express, you know, that's why we have the term being a bigger man. We don't ever have to be the bigger woman. It's like, right. you know, we do, men have, some men have experienced emotional abuse from their women. And, you know, we just have to either eat it sometimes or we just, when we do step up or speak up, 
now is, oh, you shouldn't be going back and forth with a woman or why'd you block her? That's sassy. It's like, I'm trying to protect my peace at the end of the day. So maybe yeah. blocking her was the best move on my mm-hmm. end because I didn't want to have to say something that I was going to regret. You get what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I think sometimes when men are being uh, more emotional or just intelligent about their emotions, it some women can perceive it as, oh, well, he's just being sassy or whatever the case is. So, you know, I think we do struggle with that. And because we have single parented households, a lot of us, or we came from single parent households, we haven't seen that male and female dynamic of two adults in a relationship being able to express themselves emotionally and resolve, you know, conflict resolved out of that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So a lot of times we're just, you know, living vicariously through somebody else, like, you know, yeah. unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things that makes it hard being a man, because there's like two parts to it on on one aspect of it, again, like I, I do like having these biological conversations around what it looks like when the protector is being vulnerable, right? So sometimes what I say, what an example that I give is like, if there's a fire and the firefighter comes, but he throws me in front of it, like he's like scared too. I'm like, I'm gonna be like, what you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you scared of the flames. Mm-hmm. Like, what you over here? You know, what I mean? like you, 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 you ducking with me, you know, or a cop does it. And so. And what biologically, would your attraction level to him be course. a decrease? Decrease. Okay. Yeah. Decrease. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? If mm. a cop, if guns start popping off, pop, 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 and the, and the cop is like bringing me on top of him, like, you know, help a brother out. Use the like, shield. Like, yeah. What? Yes. <laughs> give me a badge. Give me right. a badge. Give me, give, you know, yes. I, I, like, I'm done, you know? And so when biologically right um Mm -hmm. on a i would say primitive caveman Mm -hmm. primitive level not elevated on a primitive level it Mm -hmm. does occur as a threat Uh because we're not anticipating a man being vulnerable this is why dating right now is really hard because we're no longer attracted to traditional primitive relationships we want a transcendent one Uh now we're spiritual now we're talking about feminine and masculine energy. Mm-hmm. You know, now now I need to be well traveled. We've added to the repertoire of what it means to have a healthy relationship, right? Mm-hmm. And so on the on the other end of that is again is that spiritual. So my question would be to a gentleman: if a gentleman, if a grown man, let me preface it by saying, grown man mm-hmm. tells me that that's how a, a lady is responding. My response to him is: is she a woman or is she a grown female? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. all of the women I know. Mm-hmm. are unbothered by a man expressing himself. So most of the times when guys are talking about their experiences, I'm bewildered because I'm like, where are y'all finding these women at? And that's what I was going to say, right. vetting. I think the mm-hmm. vetting process for both men and women are poor. Mm. Mm. And so, again, we're looking at that that surface level and we're not having in-depth conversations and yeah. we're not finding out whether or not someone has been through a traumatic childhood and have they gone through therapy and have they done the work. It's I'm cute, you cute, we're going to be cute together. Mm-hmm. And then you're surprised when you get so much pushback because she's dressing in a way that you find is too sexy. Mm-hmm. Or you're surprised when um, when the gentleman is giving you a hard time when he's dating a whole bunch of women, but you got with the 6'6 basketball player, what you thought you was going to get, <laughs> right? Like, we have to do a better job of vetting and asking the right questions, paying attention to behaviors, taking our time, like you mentioned earlier, Nicole, before we jump into the bed and yeah. before we jump into committed relationships with folks because most people are not psychotic like they really cannot have this facade of of someone that they are not for too long they their their truths will show it's just a matter of are you willing to wait it out to see Mm -hmm. that part part. and then when does it become boundary setting and then selfish Mm -hmm. like in when blocking like you just mentioned blocking like i definitely used blocking before Mm -hmm. but a part of me is back and forth with that because i'm just like "Mm, am i also not caring about the other person's emotions and having a problem communicating myself you know, and setting a clear, you know, verbal boundary. Mm-hmm. Or is this person triggering me in the moment? Do I just need to step away from it? Or do I just block this person out of my mm-hmm. life? And so I'm not sure about your specific situation, but I just wanted to ask I mean, it, it varies. Nah, he's king block. That's, that's king block right there. That's king block. I am the king block. I don't entertain I don't entertain, <laughs> yeah, I don't entertain them. Like, You know, sometimes if I see that the conversation is just, you know, you sometimes you want to prove your point so badly that you just, is just spewing nonsense. Like, you know what I mean? I can't get to you at this point. Mm-hmm. So I'll just rather protect my peace. So like, you mm-hmm. hear what I'm saying? I'm like, you know what? Let me not say something before I end up on the shade room. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, <laughs> what would you say? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm just like, you know what? Whatever. A screenshot. Right. You know what I mean? So um, before we get up out of here, we got, I want to get to two more um, topics. Um, and I want to start here with Nicole. Um, can a man who is non-religious um, still be an effective leader for his family? Mm-hmm. I, did, I did see you speak, uh, um, speak about this topic before as far as a man being a leader. And how he's, you know, grounded in re- God and religion 
um, things of that nature. Can somebody who is not religious still be a leader for his family? I think it just depends on what you're serving. Mm -hmm. I think a man needs to serve something bigger than himself. Mm -hmm. So if you're not religious, are you living a life of servitude and for what? In your community, in your family, are you serving something? Um, and I think that's what religion does a really good job of is having that relationship with God allows you to serve something greater than yourself. Mm -hmm. And so you're not just a man whose ideas are just like off a whim. I want to do this because I want to do this. No one's holding me accountable. I have no yeah. character or values to stand on. It's mm -hmm. just all about what I want. I feel like that's a little bit irresponsible and I wouldn't trust a man like that to be personally. Mm -hmm. um, but yes. I want to hear what the other ladies think. No, I definitely agree with you. And I feel like a man that's not religious can be a leader, but definitely have to have the values and the standards. Mm -hmm. that you stand for nothing. You stand yeah. for nothing. Yeah. You know, you stand for nothing. Like, exactly. yep. yeah. You'll fall for anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I feel like any if a man is not tethered, connected, grounded to something, he's like a live wire. Yeah. I don't think that most men understand their influence. They have a very strong influence. And I think one of the reasons why men don't understand the influence is because they experience the influence of a woman so greatly mm -hmm. that they don't recognize it in, in even in and of themselves. Right. But women do. A woman understands like you, you I'm, I'm I can be impressioned by you. And so if a man isn't connected to some sort of force greater than himself, he he, he becomes a, he can become a danger to his household yeah. mm -hmm. because then to what to what are you obeying? You become sovereign. You become your own God. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So do I think a man can lead without religious um, or, or or spiritual? Because I'm thinking that might be the, you know, the, the term is just does he believe in something like a greater power yeah. or is it the religion part? Uh, I was speaking religious um, just from the aspect of religion. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that he has to be religious, but I do recommend that he has some sort of spiritual inclination, understanding that you did not make yourself, you did not bring yourself here. Yeah. And because he has the the the, um, the expansion to be able to recognize that he is not self-made. Right. I think when a man believes that he did it all on his own, like he really believes that, that is, he's hardened. Yeah. And so when you're hard and you're impenetrable, like you can't really connect, you can't really relate, and you he, he can become very arrogant. Everything becomes about him. So I think that spirituality or, or you know, necessarily religion, but a belief in a higher power serves a man in being a greater a greater leader. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on this? My thought is, is that he cannot lead his household if his wife or partner is religious. I'll tell you that. Mm. Because when you have two people who are in a romantic relationship building a family mm -hmm. and one of the fundamental beliefs are not in alignment, that relationship will not work. Yeah. So if that woman is a religious woman and that man is not, first of all, they shouldn't be dating. Mm -hmm. But if it escalated beyond that, now they have a household, they're going to be in constant conflict every Sunday. It's going to be mm -hmm. a constant conflict about what Christmas looks like. It's an issue mm -hmm. that that's should bad. not be one. Yeah. If you bad. are a religious person, you mm -hmm. should not date people who are not it's going to be a constant mm -hmm. struggle for the duration of that relationship and i suspect that relationship will not last yeah, yeah. Amen. and I'm, I'm i'm like a, i'm a woman of god so mm -hmm. like i'm i get excited to be led by a man who's led by god mm -hmm. totally. because if you're living your life for god in purpose right what does that look like it looks like you're serving something greater than yourself and it's like i serve you i take care of you i'm taking care of your purpose i'm taking care of god's purpose mm -hmm. so like if i get excited to do that then that means like I'm just going to take care of you more. I'm going to spoil you more. I'm going to make sure you go out into that world and you serve God's purpose. Like and I'm going to serve you because you are leading me somewhere to a life that I can be proud of. Mm -hmm. And like that excites me. And it's not, that's when like servitude and submitting to your man, you can trust that because yes. you trust God and you have a man that trusts God. Yes. And like, that's a dream. Yeah. You know? right. In I regards think. to the- piggyback mm -hmm. on what she said, because I was in a marriage for like 10 years and we were unequally old. Mm -hmm. And when I say you don't Over think here. about little things that when you have children and then the whole different dynamic of everything. And then when you have children, it's like, oh, wow, like this really matters. Yeah. <laughs> like having a man that believes in God and has the same values and you guys are aligning to the same place. It matters. And I would never date outside of that. <laughs> I think um, and I know me and Kim is on the same boat on this and. I don't, you know, if that's your preference, I, I don't have nothing to say against it. Mm -hmm. Um, But as somebody who 
I don't find myself, I don't subscribe to a religion. I am, I believe I'm much more spiritual and I am religious because I could hear, you know, all forms of religion and have and relate to it somehow. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I don't subscribe to a religious um, belief, but I still think, you know, my beliefs are very family oriented. Um, you know, me and Ace, we share the same beliefs. Um, you know, even though we don't have a, you know, religion that we subscribe to, I don't think somehow, you know, that doesn't make us any less of a leader. And I get, I get y'all perspectives and everything. Like I'm not taking that away from y'all, but just as people who I have spoken to other men who don't necessarily uh, subscribe to a religion, um, but they do believe in a higher purpose, a higher power. And, um, you know, when they hear conversations like that, it, it can be triggering because it sounds like, damn. You know, you're not, you're not a leader. You can't be, you can never be a leader. And yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, all of that? Like, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you know, I do appreciate everybody's opinion when they, when they say that. Hey, you to say? Yeah, I just think it, like, you always say, like, the two biggest things that you got to agree on in a relationship is politics and religion. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just think that if, if you're not on the same page, that the chances of it working is, is very low. However, do I I could see myself with somebody religious, but I think where it would become a problem if that they, they trying to force it on you, like yeah. instead of letting it happen naturally. Uh, yeah. So, but if you, I mean, if you weeding them out from the beginning on that, it, it, oh, that's got not a problem. Question, <laughs> like, date, like yo, yeah. the questionnaire. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Are you religious? No. Okay. Check. You guys can yeah. have the same religion yeah. and still not be equally yoked. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that's just that is, one that slice. True. That's one slice of the pie, and I think that's a part of the pie that a lot of people have been banking on because they fail to vet, like Allison was mentioning. They don't right. know how to vet, and the assumption is because listen, at the end of the day, if if religion was the hall marker, then we wouldn't have 50% of marriages ending in divorce. Mm -hmm. And right. quite a few of them are in the church, right? Mm -hmm. So that goes to show you that you could, you could subscribe to the same exact God and still not have a relationship that works. Yeah, that's right. the thing. Like, I, I think it's very important, but I, I do think that there's more important factors that, that can overcome that. Like, if y'all both communicate well and y'all explain to what each other believes, then it could work. Mm -hmm. Right. It could, it could work. Listen, I'm tired of y'all pastors out there. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Listen, this, um, this last topic before we get up out of here. Um, you know, is marriage still a, a, a viable concept? You know, we talked about this with well, the divorce. got that. She yeah, we, we talked about this with the divorce attorney. Um, you know, and obviously we have these relationships. It seems like nobody, what he's kind of saying, nobody wants to be in relationships anymore. Yeah. Nobody seems to value um, relationship, marriages, relationships anymore. Motherfuckers want to be baby daddies, baby mamas. I, I don't know what's going on, but I do, for me, I do know the nuclear family, at least to me, is the solution. We have to get back to that. Mm -hmm. um, but do you think marriage is still a viable concept in today's modern era? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And and the fact that you said that, you know, you, it seems like no one wants to be in relationships anymore. I don't know if you guys are on the same timeline as me. That's all we talk about. Mm -hmm. Back in COVID 2020, it was entrepreneurship. Like, that was the thing. How are we going to make more money because people were so yeah. afraid about losing their jobs? Now, mm -hmm. All we talk about is relationships. Yeah. We all want to be in them. We all want to be able to function and, and be healthy and fulfilled by them. We absolutely want those things. We are afraid. Mm -hmm. We are afraid. And so I'm so thankful that we have platforms like this that are having honest conversations with people who are reasonable and fair. Because what's happening is that there's a message that's being perpetuated throughout society, especially black America, that marriage is useless. Um, men are the, are the ones left holding the bag. There's no value in it anymore. And that's absolutely just not the case. It's just not the case. Mm. As you mentioned before, if we're looking back, civil rights era, right, up until the 80s with the crack epidemic, when we had a two-parent household, children were performing better, financial, finances were more solid, Suicide there, was more, were low. there was more home ownership. Yeah. We, in every category that you can measure success, right, so mental stability, financial mm -hmm. stability, mm -hmm. general happiness, when we had a nuclear family, we were doing better as a society. Mm -hmm. Protection of women was, you know, we, we had communities, so yes. our women didn't feel like they were less protected yes. um, than yeah. they do, obviously, today. I think so. Buster Rhymes, he said it in a podcast recently where he was talking about how back in the day, even if you saw a mother, like, from the on the block, like, somebody, she's carrying her bags, everybody got to put their spliff out, get her bags, Walk her to her, her to her building, up the stairs, and not letting her hold a thing because because that nucleus was still there. Even if maybe you didn't, even if your parents weren't together, you know a bunch of people on the block whose parents were together. Yes. You know what the expectation was 
in front of a woman, uh-huh. right? Which is to not curse, to not smoke, you know what I'm saying? Help her with her bags and that she could trust that this gentleman, it wasn't at all odd. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, if a man says, hey, what's up, ma? It's a threat. Yeah. You can't walk me to my door. You're going to know where I live. Right. You're going to try to bust through the door, right? We, we, there's no trust. There's right. no trust on on, on in, in any scope. So 100% when men are in relationships, because when a man is in a relationship, in a marriage, he'll, he's more than likely to go to the doctor, right? Like there's studies on this yes. that show that they catch things a lot quicker, sooner, faster. Married right. men live longer. Married men are are healthier. Married men make more money. Make there was more There money. was um, a clip that was circulating about a gentleman who says that he puts on a wedding ring when he goes into interviews, corporate interviews, and, and has meetings because married men are perceived as more stable. Wow. It's a win across the board. But again... Shit, I'm about to do that shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, 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 and be like, yeah, you know, I'm just right, looking right, for right, a new right, job. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? What like, color yeah. your ring going to be? Black or silver? Or huh? I said, what color black your ring going to be? Right. What, what uh, color your ring? I don't know what color should be. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to know all the facts. Like, you know? Right. So, so absolutely Gold. healthy marriages. Mm-hmm. Healthy. Emphasis on go. health. Because any of us could get married any day of the week. We could walk out right on Canal Street and we could pick up somebody. Right. It's not about getting married. It's getting married to the right person yeah. that has a similar vision who's going to lead us not to hell. Right, but in the right direction that we both decide is what we desire and require for ourselves and our future family. Mm -hmm. So yes, healthy marriages are the way for us to turn society around, period. Mm -hmm. Mm, That is a fact. That's a good question. We met at Starbucks. (laughs) We met at, we were 18, um, maybe I was 17, he was 18, he was working at Starbucks. And uh, we met downtown Brooklyn, bagged me, Right, um, but I the thing that. is, is that um, I was staying here in New York. Yeah. He was going away to college in California, and both of us had some insight. Like this ain't gonna work, so we kind of just fizzled. Yeah. We continued our friendship through Facebook, and then he DM me, okay. right, yeah. in the DM. So when we think dating apps is it, go down Instagram, to the DMs, huh? Facebook, like, okay. like, LinkedIn, <laughs> LinkedIn is an amazing LinkedIn. dating opportunity. Yeah, these people are already vetted. You right. relatively know where they work. You know their real first and last name. It gives you a lot of insight that people don't really recognize. Any kind of space that allows you to meet people is a dating app or a dating mm. opportunity. So you got to mm. use it. I, yeah, I never that. even thought about yeah. LinkedIn like that. Yeah. You know, just to go back to what you said about women, you know, going out in public more and, and meeting men. You know, one of the issues that I'm hearing from men is that, you know, it is harder to approach women because they do have that guard up. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? They might have that rest in bitch face. Like, it makes it I very un- unapproachable. Y'all, sometimes y'all can be a little bit unapproachable. I'm sorry. Like, I'm unapproachable. Like, you know what I mean? So that does make it a little bit more difficult. Or, you know, a lot of men have experienced a lot of rejection from yes. our women where we just be like, man, you know what? I'm just, she don't look like she want to be approached right now. Or yes. I want to be perceived as a creep because, yes. you know, mm-hmm. you know, we had an incident where somebody seen a, an attractive woman and he gave her a compliment. Hey, you look attractive, beautiful. And she just went off on a tangent on him. And he's like, yo, Ooh. damn, it wasn't even like, it wasn't like, yo, ma, you look good. He, It was a very respectful um way he approached her. And yeah. she was like, yo, I know I look good. I don't need you to tell me I look like, you know what I mean? So it was like, okay. damn, all right, well. That's what yeah. I get for shooting my shot. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I do agree. We do have to start meeting each other more in public, but being more open to, you know what I mean? Being able to talk to each other. Like, I'm tired of going to parties and motherfuckers using their phone, don't want to dance, y'all don't want to communicate, y'all don't mm, want to do nothing. Like, you know what I mean? And club Shit. culture is another thing we have to talk about, but we right. want to say that for another show. So Again, we appreciate y'all for being on the show. Again, let them know where they can follow you at. Yes, absolutely. Again, I'm Allison, Certified Dating and Relationship Coach, and you can find me at Align with Allison on every platform. I'm Patricia, and you can find me at Patricia RJL4 on Instagram. And I am Cassandra. I'm a life and relationship coach and a men's advocate. You can find me on Instagram at Ask Miss Cassandra. And I'm Nicole Glass. You can find me at Affirmations for Black Men and Nicole J. Glass on all platforms. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. want to say that I'm very beautiful. No offense to you, I'm ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm beautiful. You ain't got to right. tell me that. Right. My husband do that for me already. Show the ring. Like, you can't talk to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, dope, man. But um, again, if y'all enjoyed the conversation, hit that like button. Subscribe if y'all not already subscribed. Hit that notification bell. I know I was on y'all earlier. Y'all gotta be on that. Join the membership, please, man. The membership helps us. We on Patreon too. We got we got a lot of motherfucking shout outs, man. Like goddamn, like. The merch, okay. Oh my, my, yeah, logical. Okay. You try to we try to promote that over here. Like you know what I mean. Appreciate y'all.